Hello, this is Michael with Field Tech Academy. In today's video, we're going to be talking about work market. I've put together a playlist on the Field Tech Academy YouTube channel that's going to cover different aspects of work market, from signing up to general overview of the platform, to bidding on jobs, and to the process of completing jobs and getting paid. In this video, we're going to cover signing up for work market. If you're not familiar with Work Market, it is a web-based platform where buyers and technicians come together to send and receive service calls. Work Market is just the middleman. They are the referee when there are disputes. They do not generate their own work orders. All of that is generated from the buyer side, and the technicians bid on jobs and perform them and then get paid for doing them. If you're familiar with Field Nation, Work Market is very similar. And Field Nation and Work Market are the top two platforms. If you want to sign up for Work Market, you're going to go to workmarket.com. Then you're going to go to the For Workers section. That's because you want to be a technician. You're not going to be a buyer. Once you select that, you're going to have the option to sign up. And it is free to sign up for Work Market. Work Market has apps for Apple and Android, but we're going to do this through browser. To sign up, fill out this form. Obviously, you have to agree to the terms. Notate that you're not a robot. And you're going to do create my account. If you already have an active account, then you're going to get this error message that says the email address you entered is already in use. So you'll need to go do a password reset and get into your existing account. Once you submit the form, they're going to send a confirmation email to you that you're going to need to click on. You're just going to select confirm. And once you've clicked your confirm email, it's going to take you to complete your profile information. Enter your phone number. You can go ahead and upload a profile photo at this point. I would recommend uploading a profile photo. You want a good clear photo that is basically a headshot from chest up. You want to be smiling in the photo. You want to have your hair combed because this is a photo that all the buyers are going to see. So you want to present professionally. So I would take a little bit of time and make sure that you get a good high resolution photo. At this point, then you can adjust your photo so that it fits better into the frame. Realistically, you just want as much of your headshot as possible. When you take the photo, you want to have chest up. You need to have room for the crop. So you don't want to actually take the photo really tight. You want to take the photo a little further away so that you've got more room to work with on the crop and the adjustment. We're going to save that. We're going to continue. Whatever address you put in is going to determine where you see the most service calls. This address is also potentially going to be used by buyers to ship parts to you. And you want to make sure this is a location where you can receive parts. A lot of times I will have used a UPS store. There were times that I would go to another city and I would do service calls. So I would look up the local UPS store and I would use that address during that time when I was traveling. Now you'll notice that the system wants to match your address and auto enter the city, state, and zip. So you want to be aware of that and put in your correct address. I'm just picking a random address that I know exists. This is not at my address, so don't send me mail. Once you've entered your address, then you'll hit continue. This is where you're going to put in what your industry is. Most of the time for work market, it's going to be some sort of IT technology related type work. So you want to indicate that on your profile, assuming that is your skill set and your expertise. So you want to select technology and communication is probably what I would do come up with a title. This is an auto populating field, so it has to match something that's in their system. Now they're asking for your expertise. Most of what is on work market is IT related information technology. So you want to select something related to that and you'll be able to do more drill down after that. They don't have information technology, but they do have technology and communications which is probably going to cover most of what you're going to see on work market. Job title, they've got a list that you can't see. So you're just going to select something like a field service tech or something like that. Once you type the first word, then it shows you options. So I'm just going to say I'm a field service technician. And then you can start to select more of your skill sets. You can free type here. So for example, if you do structured cabling, you can select that. So you can free type or you can select some of these default ones computer networking, I can do cable installation, I can do wireless devices. You just want to fill this with as many applicable things as possible so that your profile looks stronger. Once you've done that, we're going to hit continue. It's going to ask you for your tax information. And then of course, you're going to select your payment account so that when you complete a job, they will know where to send the money. Once your profile is created, then you're going to want to add your tax information. It's basically going to ask you for your first and last name, or if it's a company, then you can select as a business, put in your company name, and you'll be able to select your country. 
then you'll be able to actually use your employer identification number instead of your tax ID so that all the reporting for taxes goes against the company instead of going against your social security number. Most people are going to do individuals. So you're just going to put in first name, last name, the country that you're taxable in with your actual address. And this needs to be your home address. Then you're going to enter your social security number. You're going to classify yourself, submit that. Then you're going to want to set up your payment information. So if you see over here on the left, you've got payments. You can go to accounts. And this is where you will actually add in a new account. Once your tax information is in, then you'll be able to actually go up here and hit new account. And you can add a bank account. You can add a PayPal account. Um, you can add a cash card, you know, like if some people use cash cards instead of bank accounts. And you can also set up automatic withdrawal. If you don't set this up, then you will have to manually do a withdrawal every time money hits your account. I don't know why somebody would want to manually transfer the money because it might hit and you forget about it and it sits there for a week. I have set up mine for automatic withdrawal. There's no extra fee for it. That way the money will just automatically go to your bank as soon as a buyer releases payment on a ticket. That covers the basics of how to sign up for work market as a technician. Next, we're going to talk about just a basic orientation on the site, explaining the different sections and prepping you for your freelance IT tech journey. My goal with Field Tech Academy is to help aspiring technicians see what they can do and to help experienced technicians have higher performance. If you got value today from what I shared, please like the video and subscribe to the channel so that you can learn more about how to be an independent field tech. Don't forget to check out our website at fieldtechacademy.com. I offer one-on-one -on -one coaching as well as some other products that can accelerate your quest to become self-employed as a technician. As always, let's get you out in the field making money. I'll see you in the next video.